Hello friends, today we're gonna to learn how to make a low resolution graphic or a logo become high resolution with an easy technique here in Photoshop. Now to get things started, you're gonna to need to import your logo into Photoshop and you can just do that by going to file and down here to open and then you can go select your logo from your computer and import it into the program. Now the logo that I have here, I just designed in Canva and if you need a logo, I definitely suggest checking out Canva. They have a ton of awesome templates to choose from and it's totally free. There is a pro version, but but it's not totally necessary. You can still get a lot of amazing things done with the free version, so definitely check that out. I'll leave a link down below explaining more about that. As you can see with this logo right now, the current dimensions are 500 pixels by 500 pixels. So this is a pretty average size logo, but if I zoom in here, you can notice how it's very pixelated around the edges. And that's what we want to fix up here because this doesn't look very high resolution, especially if you wanna blow it up for a print or put it on one of your renderings or something like that. So that means it's time to change the resolution of this particular image. Now with your logo layer selected, go up to image and then down here to image size. This is gonna bring up a dialog box with a bunch of different options for you, including a resolution option. Now, if you've watched my previous video about how to increase the resolution of images, this actually follows a very similar process, except there is a slight variation in how we do things here. The first thing that we'll do is go to our resolution and change this to 300 pixels per inch. And your image is gonna get noticeably bigger because the width and height are automatically going to change. Since you're adding more pixels per inch in your image, therefore your image needs to get bigger so that you can fit those pixels inside of your logo. From there, we'll make sure resample is checked off and then go to this little option here and make sure that preserve detail 2.0 is selected. By default, it'll be set to automatic. So go ahead and just change this to preserve detail 2.0. What this will do is just help make the edges look a little bit more crisp right out of the gate for you. Now, as for this noise reduction slider, let me show you exactly what it does. Zooming in onto my logo here, you can see that the edges are actually pretty crisp looking. There's no like jagged edges and things like that. But then if I bring the noise reduction down to zero, you can kind of see faintly how there's a, some weird distortion and like discoloration around these edges here. So by increasing this reduce noise option, it basically just smooths that out for you. So since we're working with a graphic and just solid colors, you can get away with a higher noise reduction amount. Whereas with an image where you have more details and things, you can't really quite do that the same. But luckily, since we're just resizing a logo, this works perfectly. So I'm gonna set mine to 80% and then click OK. Now your logo will become super big and that's because you just changed the size of your logo. Now I'll press Command and Control Zero to fit my logo to my screen and now we have our logo in a much larger size ready for action. Now right now I'm actually pretty happy with how my logo is looking. It looks pretty sharp in my opinion and depending on the logo you're working with you might have some jagged edges that are left over after this process. So this next step is going to help you get rid of that. What we're first going to do is actually sample our colors and so that we can add them back later on. To do that we'll select our eyedropper tool right here then we'll make sure that our sample size is just set to point sample. So that means you can sample really small areas of your logo if needed. Now we're going to go and click on the color of this red logo here and then we'll go and click on this gray in the words. You're going to want to do this for whatever colors you have in your logo. Now what that has done is in our swatches option here we have these two color samples that we can come back to later on so we can add them back in after we do some magic here. If you don't see the swatches option you can find it by going up to window and down here to swatches and that will bring up this exact panel for you. So now that we have those colors sampled from our logo, we're gonna desaturate this logo so it's only black and white. To do that, we can go up to image, adjustments, and then desaturate. That's gonna make our logo completely black and white or gray, depending on what colors are in your graphic. Now from here, the next step is to add a slight blur to our logo to blend out any of the harsh edges that might be surrounding your text or your emblems and things like that. So with your logo layer still selected, we'll go up to filter, blur, and Gaussian blur. Now the goal here is to just add a very slight blur so that any of those harsh edges become smoothed out and the edges just become a little bit more uniform than before. In this case, my starting point is actually pretty good. So I'm going to only use a very slight radius in this case, something like 0.9 pixels. It just adds a very slight blur, but still smooths things out nicely so that we'll have a crisp edge in our next step. So once you're happy with that, click okay. 
Now at this point, we have a logo that has blurry edges. So how can we actually make those edges sharp once again? Well, luckily with the curves adjustment layer, we can actually use contrast to make these edges sharp once again. So clicking here to add a curves adjustment layer, I'm gonna clip it to my logo layer by pressing this. So that way it will only affect my logo layer. This will be more useful to you if you have multiple layers that you're working with. And then now we're gonna go and click on the highlights option right here, the very corner. We're gonna click and drag that over. And then we'll go to the shadows and click and drag that over as well. So we're gonna just continue to play around with this until we have nice sharp edges around our logo. So in this case, I wanna look at the words and make sure that those look nice and sharp. It might take a little bit of refining here, but going back and forth between these two things here, you can see how we start to get a nice crisp edge around our graphic. So right there for me, it works really nicely. As you can see, everything is super crisp. Our words look great and everything is looking exactly how I was hoping for. So that means I found the sweet spot for my curves adjustment. This might take a little bit of playing around with your logo, but once you get it right, you'll definitely know because everything in your logo will be black and you'll have those nice crisp edges. So with all that complete, we now have a black logo with super crisp edges, might I add. So now that we have a nice crisp logo, we need to go and add back the color. But before we do that, we need to merge our two layers together Otherwise, we're gonna get some distorted colors. So shift clicking between those two layers and then just press Command or Control and E to merge those layers. And now we have everything on a single layer. Now to go add back our color, we're gonna select our paint bucket tool. If you don't see it, it's gonna be under the gradient tool. So if you see the gradient tool, just click and hold and go to the paint bucket tool. And then we're gonna go and find our swatches. This is where we sampled our colors previously. So as you can see, I have my reddish pink color for my emblem and then my gray for the words. And if you don't see the swatches panel, once again, just go up to window and down here to swatches. I'm gonna start with my emblem. So I'll click on the pink color here. And now that pink color is set to my foreground color. With that logo layer selected, I'll make sure that contiguous is checked off. That means that we'll only be able to add color if it's connected. I'll then click on my emblem like so, and it's gonna recolor that for me. And then I'll go and click on the gray color. That's now my foreground color, still with the paint bucket selected. This time I'm going to uncheck contiguous, click on my letters here, and now we have recolored our logo once again. Now at this point, we're getting really close to being able to export it as a vector graphic. But before we do, if you have a logo that's just like this one where I have a white background attached, I'm gonna quickly show you how to remove that background in no time. With our logo layer selected, we're gonna use something called select color range. By going up to select and then color range, we can now go and pick a color that we want to remove. So you might have something different. You're, image might look like this, for example, but what you want to do is click on the white background. To make life a little bit easier, you can change your selection preview to none, and then this way you see your logo as is. Clicking on my background to sample that white color, you'll notice that here in my selection preview, my logo is completely black while the background is completely white, and that's exactly what you want to go for here, is making sure that your logo is totally selected, aka black, in this preview here. If you wanna see a larger preview, just change the selection preview down here to grayscale. Then you can see it right here as well. Now, before we click OK, go to the fuzziness slider. And what this will do is essentially change the tolerance of your selection. So by increasing the fuzziness, it's going to help to smooth out any edges around your selection and do a really nice job just to blend any harsh edges that might be left over from your selection. So in this case, that looks good to me. Since my logo is black, I'm gonna select the invert option. So that way my logo will be what's visible afterwards. And then now I'll go and click okay. Now I have an active selection around my logo. So with my logo layer selected, I'll just add a layer mask. That selection will be applied onto that layer mask. And now I have a transparent background from my logo. Now to preserve this transparency, we need to save it as either a PNG file or as a vector. However, I would recommend saving this logo as a vector. So then you have a version of it that can be scaled up and down without any quality loss. So I'm gonna show you exactly how to do that. If you wanna learn how to export as PNG, I'll leave a video up in the corner right now. Before we can export this image as a vector, we need to first add a vector mask. To do that, simply hold Command or Control and click on your layer mask to create an active selection around your logo. Next, we're gonna go and select one of our selection tools. In this case, I'll just choose my object selection tool. Doesn't really matter. You can use quick selection tool, marquee tool, anything you want. But the point is, once you have that tool selected, right click inside of your selection and go to make work path. 
We're then gonna set the tolerance to one pixel and click OK. Now we're gonna have a work path created based off of our selection, and this is what we can use as a vector. With our work path created, I'm gonna go and select my direct selection tool, right click and go down to create vector mask. Now I have a vector mask of my image, so this way I can scale it without losing any quality. With all of this complete, it's time to export our image. By going up to File, Save a Copy, we'll then go to our Format Options and then set this to Photoshop EPS. I'll just call this to Vector Logo and then click Save. With all of these options looking good, click OK. And now we have successfully exported our image. So let's go look at the before and after close up. So now looking at our before and after side by side, you can see the huge difference that we have just created with this logo. This is our original image here. This is our 500 by 500 pixel logo at a 92 resolution. While this one here is our updated version after a resizing at 300 pixels per inch and saved as a vector image. So with our updated logo, we can easily add this onto any of our future projects and we don't have to worry about having any quality loss in our logo. Now, like I mentioned at the start of this video, if you're looking for a way to easily design a logo, then I highly suggest checking out Canva as a really simple and quick design resource if you're not someone who feels comfortable designing all of that stuff in Photoshop or Illustrator or something like that. Canva is a program that I use a lot for my YouTube thumbnails, my blog content, and a lot of the vector work that I have to do where I just need a simple design, but I don't want to spend a ton of time doing it. Canva has a ton of resources there and it's totally free. Now I have the pro version of Canva just because you get a lot of extra features and more graphics and things like that, but if you're unsure Sure about the difference between Canva Pro and Canva Free, I'll leave a link down below to a blog post review covering everything you need to know about these two versions. Anyways, I hope that this helped your low resolution logo become a high resolution. And if it did, make sure to hit that like button down below as it really makes a huge difference. And I thank you so much in advance. Again, my name is Brennan from BeWellCreative.com and I'll catch you back here next time for another new tutorial. See you then.